Canned heat, or what's commonly known as sterno, is a popular tool for keeping large quantities of food hot at parties or big events. Did you know, though, we could utilize a chemical reaction and a physical change to make this stuff at home? For our chemical reaction, we're gonna need a source of calcium carbonate. Great options are antacid tablets, eggshells, or even good old fashioned chalk. We're gonna take that calcium carbonate and react it with acetic acid, which can be found in household vinegar. This is going to produce a substance called calcium acetate, which we can mix with a little bit of alcohol and create the colloidal gel that can be found inside a can of Sterno. This gel is highly flammable due to the alcohol and once ignited, becomes a excellent source of heat for heating the food you find, let's say, at a holiday party. For our experiment, we're gonna use chalk. So we're gonna take a few pieces of this in a mortar and pestle and grind it up to a fine powder. Once we've ground up our chalk and we have an abundant source of powdered calcium carbonate, we're gonna mass out about 10 grams of it in our beaker. But don't forget, zero your balance before measuring. Once we have 10 grams of calcium carbonate in our beaker, we're ready for our vinegar. Now, if you read a bottle of household vinegar, it will state that it's 5% acidity, which means it's only 5% acetic acid. So, if I have 100 milliliters of vinegar, only five milliliters of it is acetic acid. The rest is water. So we're going to need about 200 milliliters of vinegar to react completely with our calcium carbonate. When we add the first 100 milliliters of our vinegar, we immediately see lots of bubbles form and hear fizzing sounds. This is a great indicator that a gas is being produced. You see, when calcium carbonate and vinegar react, we produce the calcium acetate that we're after. However, a little bit of water and carbon dioxide gas are also created. So those bubbles are filled with CO2. Let's add the last 100 milliliters and see what happens. With the addition of that last portion of vinegar, we didn't see as much bubbling, but did you notice the solution went clear? This is an excellent indicator that we've reacted all of the calcium carbonate with vinegar and now have a calcium acetate solution. There's one problem though. When we added that vinegar, we mostly added water. However, we need a saturated solution of calcium acetate to create our colloidal gel. So we have to heat it, drive off some of that water, so we have a very saturated solution. So we're gonna turn on our hot plate and we're gonna let this solution heat until it's at least half, if not less, of its original volume. Once you've evaporated most of the water and you have a cloudy solution again, Go ahead, turn your hot plate off and carefully remove the hot beaker so the solution can cool. Once your calcium acetate solution has cooled, you're ready to transfer it to your can. A metal can would work great or a heavy duty Pyrex glass that's meant to withstand high heat. You're going to need about 10 milliliters of your calcium acetate. Our final step to creating our canned heat is to add our alcohol. Now, denatured alcohol from the drugstore works just fine. Isopropyl, ethanol, methanol, if you can find it. We're gonna use grain alcohol today, and we need about 75 milliliters of it to add to our calcium acetate solution. When we add our alcohol to our canned heat, we instantaneously see the calcium acetate precipitate out of solution. So now we have a solid suspended in a liquid, creating this resistance of that liquid to flow. So it kind of contains that alcohol safely, creating our colloidal gel. And now we're ready for ignition. So you can heat your food at a party or roast a marshmallow. Instead of food, you can continue with a little bit of chemistry and add your favorite ionic compound or salt. A little copper chloride. Or a little strontium chloride. 
to different cations will turn that flame different colors. I hope a little learning has occurred here and you try this out safely in your own lab. Enjoy.